has come to our family. I'm Reginald Gickington, and you can call me Reggie, and today we'll be continuing our painting journey through the miniatures of the Darkest Dungeon board game by Mythic Games. In today's video, we're going to be doing our second boss. We've done the unholy skeletal hordes of the ruins, now it's time to meet their maker, the Necromancer. A deceptively simple looking model, this guy presents his own fun and unique challenges, and I, for one, am excited to tackle them head on with you all. So let's get started. Step one is, as usual, a black prime. Then we're using corn red all over all of the robes and Rackarth flesh on the flesh parts. That is to say the hands, but also the ropes connecting the reliquaries on his belt. I forget that step here, so you won't see it just yet, but you'll be able to see later as the rope stands out pretty clearly against the chains. Also, my necromancer suffered the unfortunate loss of one of his fingers, which I understand is a recurring problem, though I didn't mind enough to request a replacement from Mythic. I think it actually adds to the effect. It gives a sort of Frankenstein-esque, body parts are rotting off sort of look, which is appropriate for the character. We're using a number of metallics now. First up is Sir Coat's Silver, applied to the metal collar, the chains around his waist, the metal decoration on his hood, and the chain around his neck. Then Retributor Armor is applied to the large golden containers hanging from his waist. I'm not exactly sure what they're meant to be, whether they contain scrolls or sensors of some kind. In any case, the last step is Balthazar Gold, applied to the caps on the scrolls on the back of his belt. The next step is going to be Wraithbone and Buff. Wraithbone goes on the bandages wrapped around his hands, and Buff goes all over the scrolls, both on his belt and dangling from his hand. Buff can be a bit temperamental over black, so be sure to do several thin coats for proper coverage. My favorite step is next, washing. This time it's going to be really simple and straightforward. Black wash applied all over the entire miniature from top to bottom. Now we're going to highlight the miniature. The first step is going to be corn red, applied as a highlight on the robes. Luckily these robes have a lot of texture to them, so there's a lot of opportunity to follow those folds and ridges in the fabric. Next up comes Rune Lord Brass and Buff. Rune Lord Brass is going to go on those golden reliquaries in a sort of ring around each section. And then Buff, on the other hand, is going to be used on the scroll. Don't forget the scrolls on his belt as well. To highlight the skin and the steel, we're using Rackarth Flesh, applied in a few dots on the fingers, and Jokero Orange, with a light stippling and dry brush in a few key spots around his collar to give it a hint of rust. Thank you. 
We're doing the stonework and shadows now. Mechanicus standard gray, black wash, and black templar for the black parts. Now the necromancer has some pretty dramatic shadows in the original art, with the majority of his robes actually being pitch black. I found that in practice, these didn't look quite as good on the 3D model, so I left a few visible red highlights in some key locations that just aren't there in the original art. The effect of which ensures that the robes still feel like they're red with black shadows, instead of just being black cloth. Now that normally is the end of it, but I took another look at the original art and decided I wanted to boost those highlights on the robes even higher. So we're going to use corn red once again to make our first round of highlights even bigger and more dramatic, and then Mephiston red is going to be applied in a few key places. The top of his right forearm, the left side of his hood, and the top of his left arm. And that rounds out the Necromancer. I'm really proud of this one, and a big fan of the model itself. The robes have a lot of potential, both if you want to paint it in more a traditional style, or if you want to adapt the heavy shadow style of the game. In any case, I hope you all enjoyed watching, or maybe even painting along. In the meantime, have fun painting your Darkest Dungeon miniatures, and feel free to tag me on Instagram, at ReggieGick, to show me how yours turn out. Links to my affiliated socials can be found in the description. Feel free to subscribe or like the video if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you soon with another painting tutorial.